Hello, this is Nathan Barnes with Wayland Baptist University. The course is Religion 1302, Virtual Campus, Section 7. And uh, in case you're in the wrong place, this is an introduction to the New Testament. And uh, I'm Dr. Barnes. My phone number is listed here. I'm just going to go over the syllabus with you in this video. And uh, my website, if you want to learn more about me, um, I graduated from Bright Divinity School in 2012 with my PhD. My dissertation was on philosophically educated women and 1st Corinthians. What I did was I studied the history of women in philosophy and used that to imagine how such a woman would interpret 1st Corinthians. You know, that's the kind of thing you got to do with your dissertation. you got to just kind of pull from everywhere and come up with an original idea. Um, it's going to be published, uh, hopefully, this year by uh, Wiff and Stock. Uh, don't have a clue how to say it, but that's what I say. Um, office hours. I don't have any. I don't have an office. Uh, well, I actually have a home office here. Um, I am a professional freelance writer. Uh, what I do mostly is uh, I edit novels and then I ghostwrite and you know people just want you for anything whenever you're a freelancer so uh, I've recently even I self-published a book because most of my clients do that uh, so I, we, we could I could talk about that for a long time too but uh, that's what I do I'm here in Fort Worth Texas and uh, be sure and go to the uh, introduce yourself discussion area so and you can tell everybody a little bit about yourself because we're going to be uh, spending a little bit of time together and it's good to know at least the basics about who we are uh, talking to um, you know the course time and location catalog description this is straight from uh, the Wayland Baptist University catalog and uh, I'll go ahead and read it to you because it is important uh, this is an introductory survey which means that introductory means basic you know you're just being introduced to it but survey means you're going to be looking at a whole lot of stuff because we're going to be uh, looking at the entire New Testament and its contexts and the social structure so it, it is something that's very broad in, and in order to do that you're going to have to read a lot you know not a whole lot but um, a little bit in Metzger. We're not going to read the whole book. But uh, the first couple of weeks are going to be a lot of reading. And um, you might not think it's a lot, but just got to warn you. And uh, it's, but it's not difficult. You know, Metzger is boring. He's not hard. <laughs> so he's somebody that you can read. He has great information. Now, he was the head of the um, of the New Testament criticism department at Princeton for a long time, which basically means he, the only thing this guy did was read fragments of the New Testament, and there are thirty thousand of them, and he figured out a way, or several ways, to prioritize these fragments and piece them together. You know, the the New Testament is not a nice, pretty little thing that you know came out the way that we had it you know it's something that's gone through a two thousand year evolution and the first thousand years maybe the first fifteen hundred years were just wild you know they they have just manuscripts everywhere and then no, no two of them match you know there's thirty thousand of them no two manuscripts match perfectly now now, a lot of people say it's close enough to perfection to say it's perfect. But there's no such thing as close enough to perfect, you know. It's either perfect or it's not. But, um, anyway, this guy came up with, uh, you know, just brilliant ideas of how to put the New Testament together. And when you're reading the NIV Study Bible, you're reading Metzger's work. You know, he, he put together the Greek that's behind the NIV and a lot of every other modern translation. 
So uh, it wasn't just him single-handedly. He has he had a team of other scholars that brilliant scholars that helped him. But uh, he is a very very important guy in New Testament studies. Unfortunately, he died recently. He died while I was in my PhD program, and uh, sad day. Um, the resources that I've just talked about. Number one is the NIV Study Bible. Now, the NIV Study Bible is a wonderful, awesome resource. But if you can't get your hands on one, you can use any NIV. It doesn't matter to me because I want you to read the New Testament. Um, you can read all those notes in the NIV Study Bible, but I want you to be familiar with the actual text. So you can use whatever NIV you want. And then there's Metzger. I just told you about him. Uh, New Testament's background. This is not a scholarly book. It is, uh, you know, it's written by a scholar, but it's written for students. So, uh, but it's probably written for students that have a slightly different taste than uh, than what you guys have. But uh, he's not he's not terribly difficult. But he does cover a lot of material. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. Get it in the recording area. I have been fighting this thing all night long, so hopefully it's working. Um, this is this is going to be really important here. The course learning outcomes. You know, this is what we want you when you take the New Testament class at Wayland Baptist University. This these are the four things that we want for you. And the first one is knowledge of the historical, religious, and social context of the New Testament world. Now, the New Testament did not come from our world. And what I mean by that is, it, it's not written in our language. It uh, had different social structures, like the way people interact with each other is completely different. And um, the uh, religious environment was different. And uh, that pretty much covers it because a lot of things fit into those categories and you can see you know historical religious and social those are three different disciplines in New Testament which means there's a whole lot of people writing about the history of the New Testament the historical context there's a whole lot of people writing about religious context and there's even more writing about social even though that's new for New Testament studies but you're going to have a basic working knowledge of these things uh, whenever you complete the course. And then demonstrate some of the critical knowledge, demonstrate knowledge of some of the critical methods used in New Testament studies. Now I'm not going to tell you, you know, this is tech, you know, textual criticism, you need to know how text, textual criticism is done and you need to know the history behind it and you gotta have the methodology and the philosophy down or and then you gotta have the social context criticism you know there's like there's hundreds of different ways to criticize the Bible the criticism and criticism is a way of being scientific about your study that's why they that's why they have method and um, critical it's they're trying to get on par with what science is doing. Uh, demonstrate an understanding of the basic content of the New Testament. Now the New Testament is 26 books. Um, it's something I can't remember how many words it is but it's a lot. Um, everybody can read the New Testament between now and the end of the term and we're going to have a you know have a reading schedule and there's sometimes there's a whole lot of books in a reading assignment, but the books are only like a page long, so uh, don't be intimidated by that. And um, read the New Testament uh, with an open mind and be and, and be relaxed. You know, you don't, don't want to be in a big hurry whenever you're sitting down to read. Course requirements. This is also very important. Uh, just remember that we follow a regular week. You know, we, fall, we go Monday through Sunday. 
and you have all that time between Monday and Sunday to do what you need to do for the week. And uh, over the course of that time period, you can do what's required in the course. So um, all the assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we follow Central Standard Time because that's where Plainview is. And you know the heart of Wayland Baptist University. So, 11:59 by midnight is when everything is due. I do not accept late work, and I'll tell you why. This is an internet-based course. There are discussions that you're required to do. There are blog posts, and they only live in the moment. You know the the it's only alive between between Monday and Sunday. And once Sunday happens, it doesn't matter because people aren't going to go back, you know, whenever it's week three, they're not going to go back to week one whenever late work is turned in. And the entire point of this exercise is for us to interact with each other. So the, the requirements of the class is probably less than what you do in a day on Facebook um, if you're into that kind of thing. So... Um, Everybody can do it. Okay, number one. Most weeks have assigned readings from either Metzger, the New Testament, or sometimes both. Now, the first three weeks is what I call Metzger heavy. You know, you're going to read a couple of sections out of Metzger and uh, no New Testament sometimes. And then sometimes you have a lot of New Testament. So those are the two texts that we're going to be looking at. There's a short reading review on the, based on the reading each week. Now, the reading review is a couple sentences, a couple paragraphs about what you've read in the text. And I want you to shape that. Now, this is important. Shape that around two questions. You come up with a question for Metzger and a question for the New Testament. Now, it can be whatever you want, but try to make it substantial. You know, an example of the question would be, you know, why did Jesus speak so harshly to uh, the woman that he called a dog? You know, and you can explore that. You know, how would I feel if it happened to me? You know, would I be able to come up with the same kind of response? And how are we supposed to interact with it today? And maybe give a suggestion you know, the reading review is not so much based on words as it is content. You are convincing the professor that you've read the material and something stuck whenever you read it. So, um, the more you write, it might not be better for you. But um, if you just give one word or something like that, <laughs> obviously, you know, but uh, I really want you to take advantage of the reading review because it's an important exercise. Whenever you come, whenever you ask an intelligent question, and everyone everyone can do that. When you ask a question, what you're doing is you're using all the knowledge that you have and funneling it into this question. You know, like you have to know something about the historical, religious, and social context in order to ask an intelligent question that has to do with all three of those. You know, that would be, we call it in education, higher order thinking skills. But I just want you to understand the reading review. I only want about half a page on two questions. First question on Metzger. Second question on the New Testament. So, piece of cake. Okay, and don't get don't get d discouraged or thrown off by reading review. You know, I could call it anything. Uh, my professors called it a reading review, so that's what I call it. And I might come up with a better name, but the name is irrelevant. What is relevant is the questions that you ask. Okay, next one is the forums. Uh, there's a discussion forum on the course website and it's divided up by week 
and I come up with three questions for each week to that we discuss. You don't have to answer all three. You can answer one or you can come up with a question of your own. But you, you have to interact in some way with at least one question. And then you have to post uh, three posts on uh, other students or your professor. Uh, you got to interact three times with other people. Now you can do that in 15 minutes on Facebook. So you can do it, you have enough time to do that in, in the week. And plus it, it starts getting fun. You know these questions are difficult questions that I'm asking and you're going to come up with difficult questions that require thinking and we're not going to agree with each other. We're not going to get mad at each other but we're not going to agree and sometimes those disagreements may you know get a little out of hand because we don't know each other very well and we don't know what what uh, each other have been through so uh, that's why you gotta introduce yourself um, so one post on a question in the discussion forum I've already posted it for the first four weeks so you can even look ahead if you want uh, and then three posts on other people that or interacting with other people and one word posts are not going to be graded you know you can make them you can say yes or I agree or uh, no uh, if you want but it's not going to count towards a grade you know it, for it to count it's got to be at least a couple sentences and it has to express a point of view you know if you say no or yes we don't get you you know we don't get your contribution you know I'm here to interact with you and uh, when it's just one word it's not it's it's just not worth much so make your post thoughtful and addressing the questions that's all and this is a minimum of four posts in the discussion area per week now the more you post the better your grades gonna be because that's 20 percent of the grade so um, you know I found out early on in teaching if there's no grade it's not gonna happen and that was the same with me whenever I was in college but uh, this is something that all of you can do and hopefully it'll be interesting um, and then last or not last number four the midterm and the final exam um, I don't like midterms and I don't like final exams and I really don't like that the midterm had to fall on a day that we have an assignment in order to finish so you need to prepare for that uh, I didn't have any problems with it uh, in my last class that I taught because you know by the, t by the time you get to the midterm you're kind of in the rhythm of the course and you know I'm requiring basically the same thing every week you know every week follows this this five point pattern so you can get into get into the groove and then study for the midterm and you have a week so you can take your midterm and do the assignment so just be prepared for that I tried to make the assignment as easy as I could but you know we need to get through the New Testament so uh, I had to do it um, but the midterm I think is awesome uh, it's mostly essay from me and then I have a project for you all for extra credit if you want it's not in the syllabus so this is something new um, I have a project called create your own midterm and in that project if you participate you're going to submit only three questions a week it's going to be posted on that it's going to be a forum where you create your own thread and you just post three questions a week until we get to the midterm and if you do those all you got to do is ask a question you don't have to answer it you know and it doesn't have to be accepted um, into the midterm in order to get credit 
But if you do the three questions uh, each week for the, for the midterm, um, you'll get five points added to the end of your average to the final grade. You get five points. That means if you make an 85 for the course and you did the project completely, you are going to make a 90. And then the same thing happens for the final exam. It's the same format. You ask three questions a week, and um, you get five, another five points added. So I have, I have had students who have gotten 10 points added to their final grade because they uh, participated in these two projects. Um, fortunately, I guess, both of these students had made a 98, like before they even had the extra credit. So um, I thought that was kind of funny. I can only give you 99. That's it. So um, if you're trying for that that 100, it's not going to happen. So that's just the highest it goes. Um, okay, blog entry is the final thing, 100 words. And I write 100 word sentences. So I think that you can write three sentences and get 100 words if you're writing a reasonably long sentence. And blog entry is just that. It's expressing your views. You know, I do not grade on content in the blogs. I just check to see if it's done. And it, and a lot of the blog posts that I see have been wonderful. And students can comment on it. And, you know, it extends sometimes to the next week. You know, you can, I always leave the previous week open. You know, everything. You can go back and you can post whatever you want, anywhere. Um, the only thing that, that doesn't apply to is the midterm and the final exam, for obvious reasons. Um, so a blog entry is required every week, just 100 words, and you do that last. You know, you're reflecting on um, what you've learned in the week, or the discussion, or the questions that I asked, or, you know, any, any portion of the course that just had caught your attention, just write a few sentences about it. Okay, obviously you need internet access, and obviously you need to attend every class period. It's a beautiful thing about about internet courses. You can take, you can participate when you want to. We do have services for the disabled. I had to put that in the syllabus, and that's a good thing. Course evaluation. Of course, uh, 90 to 100 is an A, and then so on and so forth. That's not um, news to anybody. And then the incomplete and for credit and no credit. Now, this, is, this gets hairy if you want to drop the course late in the semester. And I don't have anything to do with anything on the right side of this. You know, the, the I, C, R, and C, R, and all that stuff. That's given by the administration at Wayland. So uh, I don't have any control over it. Uh, I do have a little bit of control over an incomplete. But um, other than that, you need to watch the schedule and, and withdraw from the course before you get to that withdrawal failing point. So, that's just a heads up. Okay, my grading procedure is very straightforward. 20% on each portion of the course. Now, I want you to note number four and number five. The midterm and the final exam are both 20% each. And let's compare that to number one, the reading reviews average. Now you're going to have 11 reading reviews, and those 11 reviews are together worth 20 points, I mean 20%. And the midterm, which is just one assignment, is worth 20% of the grade. It's worth 11 of those reading reviews. And the reading reviews are graded easy, more, a lot easier than the uh, midterm and also the final exam. So. If you bomb the midterm and the final, you're not going to have a good grade. 
but um, if you study for the final, if you study for the midterm, you're golden. And uh, also if you participate in the extra credit assignments. Okay, late assignments will not be accepted, and I've already said that. Do contact me, though, if you have a surgery or if you have an ill family member or something you know, out of your control that you can't, that you can't help, and we will talk about you know, what can be done uh, about that, about the grading at least. Okay, academic honesty, uh, plagiarism. I hate plagiarism. Um, I am very good at detecting it. Um, I don't think that I don't think we're going to have a problem in this course because there's no papers and you know everybody can make a make a post in a discussion forum without copying from Wikipedia or something like that. If you do, I will see it because I'm very very good at it. Um, I had a client recently who gave me a book to edit, and more than fifty percent of it was plagiarized and he fought me tooth and nail taking stuff out and he told me uh, one time that um, well, what was it he said exactly oh he said this is like writing the book all over again you know if I do that and I said sir you didn't write the book you know, and it's so sad that it came from Wikipedia, you know, of all places. Um, and that's where everybody looks. You know, if you're, if you're reading something and you have a question about it, the first place you go is Wikipedia, usually. You know, if, if, you, if there's a word you don't understand or somebody you don't know who they are. Uh, and I'm like, whenever somebody reads your book and they don't understand something, they're going to open up Wikipedia and see that you copied it. And that's not going to be good for you. You know, not only is it a credibility issue, it's a legal issue. So, anyway, uh, don't plagiarize. And that's copying, and basically in this case, it's copying and pasting from the internet. Um, I've never had a problem with it, so I don't expect it to happen. But if it does, I'm going to be not very happy. I once had a graduate student turn in a paper to me, 30 pages plagiarized, the entire thing. And he just didn't understand research. So I taught him how to do research, and he's fine. Okay, as you can see, this is the course calendar, and your assignments for week one, it follows that a five-point, um, well, it's six points here because I added a lecture. You know, there's a lecture each week. It's not really like an assignment that you do. But you're going to receive lecture notes from me. They're exactly the notes that I'm going to use when I give my lectures. So you can use that as a platform to take notes. And I also take a lot of my uh, final exam and midterm questions directly from that. You know, I'll just put a, put, you know, what if, you know, or make it into a question when it's not a question. So if you study that, you're going to be fine, but everything is fair game, you know, for the exams. You're reading in both Metzger and the New Testament, and the, the lecture that I give, and also the discussion areas. You know, I'm going to ask you about what, what people thought about things. So uh, it's just my way of knowing if you're paying attention whenever you're, whenever you're uh, posting. Now, in the final exams, the midterm exam, I'm not going to ask you something obscure, you know, like, like a trivia question, uh, you know, something to trip you up. You know, I'm going to ask you something that, you know, you need to know. So that's that, I think. Um, the course outline and calendar is posted in the weekly assignments and I, what I do is I put my lecture uh, just above the uh, you know between week one and learning tasks I put my lecture my lecture right there and it's on YouTube 
and sometimes I will give you a choice between seeing my ugly mug during the video or um, you know going without the picture and just hearing my voice so uh, I, I don't watch to see who watches me and who doesn't it just seems more natural to me to have a voice and a face you know it's like we're talking so um, if you have any questions contact me and I'm going to create a forum uh, if I can before the class starts I'm going to create a forum where you can ask me questions and it can be anything it's just your place to ask questions about the lecture about you know the New Testament you know whatever we need to say it's kind of like what you would say to a professor after class or before class if we were in person uh, that's where I'm available to you um, and then also by, of course by email that's on the that's on this um, syllabus so I look forward to this semester I think it's gonna be awesome I love hearing what people think about the New Testament um, it might be a little weird but I study it so much and I have my own opinions and you know what I think are facts and um, it's just so good to talk about it whenever you're whenever you study it that much so uh, look forward to it and I will stop talking now